Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm doing five more mini reviews for you. Uh, these are going to be five quick overviews of five different games, giving you my thoughts, my opinions, what I liked and didn't like, not going into the how to play quite as much, but just talking about my general impressions of them. And we're going to start off first with Fishing Lessons from Button Shy Games. Fishing Lessons is a part of the Simply Solo line from Button Shy from Scott Arms. It's going to give you a solo puzzle of managing, well, depends on what you're trying to manage. You see, you're going to have different characters in the game, and each character has certain goals. And so the character you play with is going to define a bit of what you're trying to do. Meanwhile, you're going to have a row of fishing cards, and you're trying to fish various, well, things from the... You're trying to fish. You're trying to fish effectively. But then also, the game has a degree of programming. That's what the game features, and there's a degree of programming in the game as you draw cards that give you an action, but then you're going to be continuing across the course of the game drawing cards that give you an action, and you have to carry out that sequence and chain of actions as you try to gather and flip cards in order to fulfill your goals. So effectively, what this game is doing is it's giving you a programming puzzle. That's what the game is doing. It's giving you a programming puzzle as you go through it, something that you're trying to figure out how to can I, how can I structure my, my cards in such a way that I'll be able to eventually get the right combination of flipped cards to accomplish my character's goal? I overall enjoy this one. I think it does a fairly good job as far as giving you a compelling little miniature, miniature puzzle, fits very well within Button Shy's catalog, and overall is one of my uh, better games within the Simply Solo line from Button Shy. I like this. I recommend it. To me, this is a 3.5 out of 5. I'm not yet sure if it sticks around. I think there are a lot of solo games in my collection. The question is which one is going to, which ones are going to be most compelling? And as much as I do enjoy Fishing Lessons, at a 3.5, it doesn't compare to some of other Button Shy's games like Sprawlopolis or, or the Oniverse, which is outside in terms of a solo puzzle. I like this, I do enjoy it, and I'm curious, the problem is like the Button Shy tends to do expansions to a degree, and some of the expansions they've had so far just haven't given you like more characters or things that didn't really change my my impression of the game, but just gave me more for the game. But overall, again, I like it, not in love with it, a 3.5 out of 5. Then we have Compromot over here. Compromot is going to be a game from, oh my gosh, the name of the company is, I always forget, I always forget, Helvetique, I believe. Helvetique, Helvetique. Uh, Compromot from Helvetique is effectively black shack, Blackjack with powers and abilities. It's two-player head-to-head Blackjack, and what you're going to be doing is just trying not to bust as you vie over these goals. There's some degree of powers and abilities mixed into it as well, so you can see, well, loosely over here, there's going to be cards you're fighting over as you lay down different cards, and you're trying to play into those lanes while trying not to bust. Again, it's Blackjack, just with powers and abilities, because there's going to be cards and things you can use throughout the game that give you a bit more control over it. Uh, Compromot is a good game. It's a good game that I've enjoyed going through, but not... Not heavily so. Ultimately, it's Blackjack. If you like the puzzle of Blackjack, I imagine you're probably playing Blackjack. And if you don't like the puzzle of Blackjack, then I don't know if Compromot's going to change your mind. I think it's a clever use of a known system within a board game in a way that I did enjoy, but also a way I don't feel compelled to dive back into. For me, this is a 3 out of 5. I enjoy it, but ultimately, it's it's Blackjack, which is okay. I don't mind it but I didn't, I didn't necessarily need it in a board game. Then we have Oh My Brain over here. Oh My Brain is going to be from 20th Century Games, designed by, I believe, Bruno Cathala. It doesn't say it. There we go. Bruno Cathala on the side of the box. Uh, oh, My, oh My Brain is a game of of trying to, how do you even put this, trying to be the last one standing in the game, ideally. You kind of have this point system, and then there's a certain point where the round will end, and then you'll subtract points, and then eventually someone's going to be out of points, and the person with the most points wins. You're trying to do well in the game. But what you have is over here is you're going to have your hand of cards, you're going to have your cemetery of cards. Your hand of cards are going to be a bunch of cards you're playing onto, onto a pile, and players have to go round and around escalating that hand of cards. So if I play a 10, we have to play something higher than a 10, or ultimately you're going to bust, and that will affect you drawing a new card and having to lose a brain. You're going to have these brain tokens you're slowly losing as you go through the game. Until eventually get to a point where you have nothing left in your cemetery and then everyone will lose cards everyone will lose brains based on how many cards they have left so you're just trying to get rid of cards but if you can't play a card you instead draw a card and the game also has some powers and abilities. Some of the cards in your hand will have abilities you're going to utilize, which will in some way affect things. And you have your cemetery and juggling your cemetery and juggling stealing in from other player cemeteries and rolling the die occasionally and taking actions there. It, it comes across as just being way too random. I don't feel a sense of control when I play through this game. I feel it's kind of mostly a sense of what do you have in your hand and or what do you draw. There, are, There is some agency as you play. There are decisions you make. What you put in your hand, what you put in your graveyard, what you tempt people into taking. There's definitely decisions to be made, but it doesn't feel feel like those decisions are first and foremost. It feels like luck is first and foremost, and those decisions are just small ways to mitigate what is 80% luck. It feels that way, at least. I'm not willing to guarantee that. This is one of those times, whenever you call something too luck-based, you always have that person who's like, I'm going to stomp you every time. And they probably will, because they've, they've made whatever, it, they've, they've managed to find the strategies within that. I'm not denying that. Ultimately, I just don't feel like I have a strong sense of control when I play on my brain. To me, this is fun for like a light kids game. It's not something I would ever choose to play. It's something I would reluctantly be willing to play. It's a 2.5 out of 5 for me. Then we have Sunset. Uh, let's do let's do Goryo first. We have Goryo over here. Goryo is coming to you from I know uh, we have 
Jig Games in the box, but I believe the company is Gadion Games. Uh, but Goryo is a hidden movement game. It's a hidden movement game in which there's a spirit in a temple trying to break various things as the samurai guards try to stop the spirit from getting away and breaking things. Ultimately, it's a hidden movement. It's a hidden movement game. I think it's officially two players. Yeah, it's officially two players. In theory, you can play as teams, but it's a two-player game. So one player playing as a spirit, one, playing play one player playing as a samurai. As the spirit wanders from room to room trying to break things, having specific movement restrictions as far as how they move, and the samurai trying to ultimately stop the spirit and cash the spirit a few times until the spirit runs out of its three life points and whatnot, and the samurai successfully win, or the ter alternatively, the spirit wins by breaking too many things throughout the course of the game. I find Goryo is not a bad game, but I think it's not intuitive in the way it teaches and plays. This is one of the, like, I've, I've taught a lot of hidden movement games. I've played a lot of hidden movement games, from Beast to Mind Management to Spectre Ops to Sniper Elite to, keep, I can keep going, I think, uh, Lettuce White Chapel, maybe more, I don't know, maybe those are the five, I think there's more. Either way, Within the Oak Scotland Yard, there's more. There's more hidden movement games. Within the category and genre of hidden movement games, Goryo is one of the least intuitive. And I'm not sure if it's a rule book or just the game itself. I don't know, honestly. Uh, but I, th I find it to be one of the least intuitive, both for me to learn and process myself, as well as to teach new players. It Again, it works. Functionally, once you get past that, it works. But I find other hidden movement games are more intuitive. And more specifically, I would say that even past that, I find those other games are, are better. They're more intuitive. They're more satisfying to play through. And so Goryo is not a bad game. I've had fun playing Goryo. I've actually enjoyed my time with it, but I've enjoyed my time with it with the caveat that if I'm rating things in a vacuum, maybe it's a 3, maybe it's a 3.5, but I don't rate things in a vacuum. There are other games out there, and within that context, within that context, I would call Goryo a 2.5 out of 5 for me. The combination of making it harder to actually get into, harder to teach, and then a little less satisfying compared to other of its peers in the genre just means that even though it's still fun, Comparatively speaking, it's a 2.5 out of 5. And then lastly, we have Sunset Over Water. This is going to be from Pencil First Games, and this is a game about gathering various landscapes as you move around the grid in order to commission those paintings or whatnot, sell them to the various uh, goals in the row. So you're going to have this grid you're going to be constructing, a 5x5 five five grid you're going to be making out of cards, and you're trying to use these various actions to, to figure out how early in the day you go and how you move around the board as you go, trying to collect these cards and then sell them. It's ultimately set collection in the game with a bit of a hidden movement puzzle, not hidden movement, with a... A um, uh, uh, priority action sequence and movement grid pattern that you're trying to figure out as you move around the board. I find Sunset of Water strangely compelling. The gameplay is very light. Like, it's, uh, it's light. It's pencil first. Pencil first generally has lighter games. This very much falls into that genre. But it's satisfying. I really enjoy Sunset of Water. I find that it's a satisfying puzzle as you try to figure out how to move around the grid, how to get to the things you know, what time in the day you're going to move, and then ultimately trading those in for the set collection aspect. It's not a game that wows me, but it's a game that is calming. It's it's compelling. It's enjoyable. Uh, Pencil First Games has put out a lot of games that I've enjoyed, and some of them stick around for, you know, a short time. Some stick around for longer. I had, um, the Whatnot Cabin in my collection for, like, three years. I had, I've had various of the Herbaceouses and Whatnot around for a while. They do tend to eventually leave, I find. Just the nature of my personal gaming taste does drift a little heavier, and once I've played a lighter game enough times, I feel like I've seen enough and I move on from it. And I imagine that will happen for Sunset Over Water too. I think it will. I'm not certain, because it's been around for quite some time, and doesn't get pulled out all that much, but it does get pulled out here and there when I'm looking for a calm, lots of loud text, when I'm looking for a calm, relaxing experience, a sunset over water is going to be there for me, that gives me that, it just gives me a solid, I'm going to mute that phone over there, I don't know why it's, um, let me just go ahead and put do not disturb on, I'm sorry about that, sunset over water is a calm, relaxing experience, I'm realizing I'm saying calm, relaxing, as I got a large, loud, jarring buzz in the background, but sunset of water, I, I like this one, I, I find that the, again, the movement, the timing, it gives you enough of a puzzle that there's strategy and decision making to be had, and it is very easy going, it's one of those games I pull out when I'm looking for something just fun and calming to play, something like tranquility, like sunset of water, like, like other games that will come to mind at some point, but I enjoy it, I recommend it. To me, this is a 3.5 out of 5. And those are my five mini-reviews. Again, we have uh, Fishing Lessons, a 3.5 out of 5. I like and recommend. Some of its peers, I think, are a little better at being stronger solo games, which is the only critique I have. Uh, Sensitive Water, again, strong game as well, 3.5 out of 5. I like it on the lighter side, but I enjoy it. We have Compromot, which I think is a fun game and you might enjoy, but to me, the Blackjack mechanism is not intriguing enough to carry the game past the first few plays. We have Oh My Brain, which I just... I don't particularly enjoy 2.5 out of 5. And then we have Goryo over here, which I think is actually, like, it's fun. I've joy I've played it. I've enjoyed it. I just think that it doesn't hold up to its peers within the hidden movement space. And I think it's it's not what I'd recommend because it's a harder barrier to entry and less satisfying. I'd recommend dozens of other hidden movement games, including, like I mentioned, Scotland Yard is very basic, very easygoing, uh, easy game within the genre to get into. And if you want more complicated, it has to be more rewarding. And I think that's where Goryo lost me. It was still fun, but more complicated without being more rewarding. Those are my five mini reviews. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found that this helpful in some way. And I apologize for the loud, jarring text. 
threw me off there. I should really saw this on my phone before these videos. In any case, until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co., and I hope you have a good one.